Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. This is Mrs. C's Affordable Travel. I am here on the wonderful Navigator of the Seas for a three-day Ensenada cruise out of San Pedro, not Long Beach y'all, San Pedro, California. So let's go ahead and discuss this cruise. All right, so first things first, let's discuss embarkation day. I have to admit that I realize I am a bit spoiled when it comes to embarkation day. The process for Royal Caribbean is that you uh, drive into the port and then you drive to the berth, you drop off your luggage if you want to use the port of service, which I always do. I would rather not be lugging my luggage and my carry excuse me, and my carry-on um, at the same time. And just forgive me a little bit because the ship is a little rocky today. Um, so you drop off your luggage at the porter, drive around again the whole parking lot in order to find a parking space. The only great thing about that is that the parking space is ample. So that's, that's a good thing. Um, so it's not like carnival out of Long Beach where you go into the parking structure and you might have to get there a bit early to get a really good spot. Next, you will head through several checkpoints. So initially they'll have the times out similar to carnival where you will find your time and line up behind your um, your appointment time 10 30 11 11 30 or if you have the key or if you are under some other um, line up time or program so then you do that and when you enter the first thing you're going to do is going through identification where they are going to request your boarding pass or your uh set sail pass which is the same as a sign uh sale and sign card for carnival just so you can enter into the security screening area once in the security screening area, you will need to show your ID as well as your boarding pass or set and sell, set sale pass again, set sale, yeah. After you've shown that information, you will go through security and then you finally enter the actual port. Like all of this is done in tents outside the port. After that, you enter the, you finally enter the port and it's a really quick process. As long as you have your documentation out and ready, all they do is send you over to one of the many people that are available, have the little paddles up, same thing like, you know, Carnival. Um, they do request your documentation, whether it is a passport or birth certificate, depending on your selling. And then they will sit you over to the side next to the escalators where you're going to start lining up to, you're going to be called to go onto the ship. So anyway, I do like the fact that they still have an escalator. Carnival, y'all need your escalator back because I'm tired of doing that little walk in that ramp. My little legs be hurting. But anyway, so you go through the escalator, get off the escalator, and then there are lines where they're going to check your boarding pass again. At this point, you can put your documents away. You just need to have your phone open and have your boarding pass available so they can scan it. There are three different lines. And there are two different ways to come into the ship. There are two different openings. So they have one that's further away from where you initially come in at, and then they have the one that's right there. To get around that bottleneck, go to the outside lane, which is the third one where you'll go all the, you'll walk the whole length of the ship, but then you'll be able to get on quicker because less people go that direction. You'll have to walk longer if you don't mind, but you'll have to go, less people will have to uh, go that direction because it's the sh it's the longer route. So what you see online makes it seem like the walk is very long. It's not, it's not that long of a walk at all. Um, so going either direction will work. Now, once on board the ship, your stateroom is not available until one o'clock. The li eating options are limited. <laughs> they are limited and I'm not happy with that because again, being a little bit spoiled and being on carnival, you have a lot more um, options to eat at different venues that are included in your price. Whereas Royal Caribbean has a few, and I, when I say a few, I mean like maybe three.
but that's all they have as far as things on board that you can eat that are included. So in, on embarkation day, we went to Windjammer to get something to eat. We did eat before we left, so we weren't that hungry. Actually, I didn't eat at all at the Windjammer. My husband ate there. First of all, it is a lot of choice and it's, you know, it's a nice big venue, but then it becomes really crowded really quick because everybody's bombarding this ship trying to get to the buffet. So the faster, the better to the buffet if that's where you're going to eat. My husband had um, the fried, no, I'm sorry, barbecue chicken, some macaroni and cheese, and what else did you have, babe? Mm. You said, what was on that plate, y'all? Oh, <laughs> uh, macaroni and cheese, that was garbage. Okay, macaroni and cheese was garbage. <laughs> barbecue, I remember him saying the barbecue chicken was tough. I remember that one. Yeah. And then, um, what was it? it was, you said that was the only thing that was good on the plate. Um, and I can't remember what it was, y'all. Yeah. I can't remember what it was. But you get the idea. Um, so that's how that first day went. Um, for dinner, we did go to the main dining room. Um, we had a lovely, I love the main dining room. So unlike Carnival that has like two, one aft, one forward, Royal Caribbean has one main dining room called a uh, main dining room. I never even saw a name for it other than main dining room, but it has three different levels. It has the third deck, fourth deck, and the fifth deck. So we are on the fifth deck for early dining, which is what we do, especially when we don't have the kids so we can go and be a part of the different musical tributes and all that stuff um so on the first night we had a wonderful service shout out to richard and lord i'm gonna put her name up here because i cannot remember how to say her name but our wait staff was phenomenal phenomenal the whole wait staff the restaurant staff was amazing and i'll get to that a little bit more because this is actually our second night and we did the sip brunch tour so i'll talk about that in the next video um but the wait staff was wonderful i'll put up i will be doing a review of the food that'll be separate from this video but they were wonderful so we went in we had our dining it was no problem they gave us the cutest little cozy romantic two-seater that we haven't had since our first cruise together in what, 2012, babe? The first time we cruised together was 2012. Well, with us, I cruised before him. But anyway, so that was wonderful. Um, all in all, our first day was pretty good. Um, as I said before, I am going to do a video about the sip and brunch tour, as well as the food that we had on Royal how we felt about it versus carnival. All of that is coming, guys. Thanks for being so patient. Thank you to all of our new subscribers. We appreciate you as well. So thanks a lot for watching. Be sure to take a look at these videos if you want any more information on cruising with kids or cruising on a budget. As always, happy cruising.